Hello and thank you for joining me Complete in Christ. It's walking through the book of Colossians. We're in verses 18 through 21. A uh, little mini series inside this series that the of Colossians that uh, we've entitled Complete in Christ. That we're in, it's in Christ and Christ alone that we find our fulfillment and satisfaction. We've been talking on, about the marriage relationship. Last week we looked at verse 18 and how that uh, a wife is to submit or subject herself to her husband, which simply means that you, you get in your lane. That the word means to place yourself in order. That God is a God of order. He's given directions and instructions for for marriage. Uh, that our responsibilities in marriage are different uh, because we're different. It's not that that I'm spiritually better than Tina or your husband is spiritually better than you or as a husband you're spiritually better than your wife but we have different responsibilities and we need to live out those responsibilities. Well today we're going to look at verse 19 and verse 19 says this it says husbands love your wives and do not be embittered against them. Husbands love your wives. You know the word husband comes from a a word that means there's a binding relationship. There's a binding relationship between the man and his wife in, in, in marriage. And that we need to take this relationship extremely seriously. Guys, I'll tell you up front that the best thing that you can do, the best thing I can do for my wife and for my marriage and for my family is to love Jesus above everything else. This relationship with Jesus radically affects the way I love my wife. As a matter of fact, I cannot love her the way the Word of God teaches me to love her apart from knowing Jesus and being empowered by the Spirit of God. It just don't happen. It can't happen. The way God set it up for me to love my wife is through a relationship with Jesus. I need to love Jesus above everything else, and that love for Jesus radically affects the way that I love my wife. He says here, he says, husbands, love your wife and do not be embittered towards them. In this relationship which God has called me to, in my relationship with my wife, in your relationship with your wife, he tells us in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, that a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined or cleaved to his wife. There's a leaving, there's a loosening of reins, is, is the word picture there is, that I leave my father and my mother, I enter into a, a different type of relationship but that my relationship with my parents when I said yes Yes, and when I said I do in my relationship with Tina, my relationship with my parents changed. That's the way it's supposed to be. And I cleave to my wife. I cling to my wife. I hang on to her. I hold on to this relationship because this relationship is extremely valuable and extremely important. She is a gift from God, and I need to treat her. I need to treat her like what she is. The word here for love is the word agapeo, A G A P. A-O. And basically, it means four or five things. And just kind of want to walk through that with you. That this is the way that I am to love my wife, empowered by the Spirit of God. First thing is that I... I need to love her with an uplifting love or an esteeming love. I need to love her with an honoring love. I need to lift her up. I need to brag on her. I need to brag on my wife. I need to brag on her in private. I need to brag on her in public. The best thing that ever happened to me is Jesus. And if you know Jesus, he's the best thing that ever happened to you. But the second best thing that ever happened to me is Tina, is my wife. And I need to, I need to brag on her at home, but I need to brag on her in front of other people. The world needs to know that I thank God for my wife and that I love my wife. So I need to love her with an esteeming love. The second thing is I need to love her with a rejoicing love. That I need to find great joy in loving her. I find great joy in loving Jesus. He gives me a love for her like that I could not have on my own, and I find joy in loving her. I find ways to make her happy. I find ways to make her smile. I love to see my wife enjoying life. I find 
I look for things to do with her that we can do together that we simply enjoy because we enjoy doing life together because we both love Jesus and we're both walking with Jesus. Guys, listen to me. Find great joy in loving the Lord, but find great joy in loving your wife. Have fun, man. Laugh together. Play together. Find something that you enjoy doing together and simply do it. The third thing I would say is that we need to love our wife with a serving love. That we need to serve her. We, <clears throat> we need to find ways to serve her, not because we expect something in return, but because we simply love her. Love her with a serving love. Find something you're good at. Find something you can do around the house where you can simply help her and you can serve her because you love her. Man, make her coffee in the morning. Fix her coffee for her. Find ways to help her in the kitchen. Wash the dishes. Cook a meal. Wash clothes. Fold clothes. Help your wife. Serve your wife. Try to out-serve your wife. Man, that's hard to do because most of our wives are really good at serving and most of them have had a lot of practice because we've let them. Find ways to outserve your wife. Years ago, I was at the conference in Atlanta, and, I, and a guy, his name's Wellington Boone. I don't think I'll ever forget this guy. He's a pastor in North Carolina. And he made this statement in that, in that conference when he was speaking. He said, guys, I challenge you, go home and outserve your wife. He said, you're going to find it hard to do, but I challenge you, go home, find ways to serve her, and outserve her. Man, God spoke to my heart. He, he pierced my heart. Man, I went home, and for the past 25 years, I have tried diligently to outserve my wife. Why? Because I love her. You see, if I, if I love her, I'm going to brag on her. If I love her, if I love her, I'm going to find joy in loving her and making her happy and rejoicing with her. And if I love her, I'm going to serve her. A fourth thing that I would say is love her with a sacrificing love. Man, be willing to give up stuff. Be willing to, to make sacrifices so she can know that you love her. You see, as the spiritual leader of my family, my wife needs to know that I love her after Jesus. I love Jesus above everything else, but that my bride is very, very important to me, and I will make sacrifices on her behalf. You know, she needs to know that I will give my life for her. You know, if I love Jesus, Jesus, that I need to be willing to give my life up for the cause of Christ because I love him. Same thing with my wife. You know, I need to be willing to sacrifice my life because I love my wife. But I may never be asked to do that. But I will be asked to give up something I want so she can have something she needs. I will be asked to give up a ball game. I will be asked to give up a hunting trip. I will be asked to give up something that I really, really want so she can have something that she needs or even something that she wants. Be willing to make sacrifices to show your wife that you love her. And the, the fifth way would be love her with a sanctifying love. Love her with a sanctifying love. Be a part of her life spiritually. Let the Lord use you to invest in her spiritually. Talk about the things of God. Pray together. Man, talk about what God's doing in your life. Ask her what God is doing in her life. Be the spiritual leader of your home. Not a spiritual dictator, but the spiritual leader of your home. You see, as a man, I need to be the one that says, look, we're going to be a part of a local church. I need to be the one that says, I'm going to be a part of a small group. That we are going to be held accountable to the truth of the Word of God. We're going to be in accountable relationships with other believers who love Jesus because we want our marriage to have a radical impact in our culture because we're simply walking with Jesus together. You know, I think oftentimes the reason that women don't want to submit is because we've tried to force submission upon them. Instead of me living out my responsibility as, as the husband and loving Jesus above everything else and being actively involved in her life and walking with her and loving Jesus above everything else. Last week we looked at, ladies, you need to stay in your lane. Today we're looking at men. We need to stay in our lane. We need to be the men that God's called us to be. We need to be the spiritual leader. We need to be the model of loving Jesus above everything else. And as I love him, he begins to pour in me unconditional 
eternal love is that I choose to love him, to love him back in the way I could never do on my own, but to love my wife in a way that brings him much, much honor and much, much glory and that honors her and that he uses me to be the spiritual leader within my family. That we, Tina and I, walk through life together as we love Jesus above everything else. Husband, love your wife. Do not become embittered towards them, which simply means don't become bitter, don't become harsh, don't become angry. When you have issues, deal with them. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Deal with your problems. Deal with your situation. Cry out to God. Get on your face before God. Ask God to do a radical work in your marriage. Stay in your lane, guys. Stay in your lane, wives. And let's love Jesus above everything else. And watch how he uses our marriages to make a radical impact in the culture in which we live. Go let Jesus be Jesus in you today. Let him be Jesus in your marriage. And watch the impact that that has. That that has. Have a blessed day. Thank you so much for watching Complete in Christ as we strive to teach you about the Christ life. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and may you have a blessed day walking with Jesus.